Welcome to another video. Here I have a polynomial equation, a fifth degree polynomial, and I'm supposed to find all integer values of x that satisfy the equation. See, this is what you call a Diophantine equation. Anytime you're only interested in the integer solutions, and it's usually much easier than if you were interested in all kinds of solutions, including the complex solution. So I'm going to solve this my own way. And I know there are multiple ways of solving it, but I think this way I'm going to solve it is easy for anybody to understand. Let's get into the video. So looking at the equation, I have x to the fifth minus 3x squared minus 216. And I immediately think, can I factor what I see? Well, because I do not expect to get any other type of answer apart from integers, it is okay for me to move this number over to the other side and try to break them down and see what becomes obvious, like I did in other videos. So I am going to say that x to the fifth minus 3x squared will be equal to 216. Now, the number 216 is a familiar number to me because 216 is 6 to the third. 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. But I can't see anything like 6 to the third on the left-hand side. But one thing I can do to the left is factor it. See, I see there's a common factor of x squared. So let's see what we have. If I take out x squared, what I have is x to the fifth minus, sorry, x to the third, rather, minus 3 will be equal to 216. The only question I'm going to ask myself is, is it possible for me to write 216 as the product of a square and another number? Because if I can then I'm good. So, looking at it, it might look difficult, but once you know that 216 is 6 to the third, look, this is the same thing as 6 to the third, which is equal to 2 to the third times 3 to the third. Laws of exponents, you can break it down, right? Um, this is equal to 2 times 3 to the third. So I break it down into this. But what I want is I want a square multiplying another number. So I might have multiple options. The first square, the smallest square I can generate from here will be 2 squared times 2 times 3 squared, right? Or I can do 3 squared, which is going to be 9 times 3 times 2 cubed. Another option is to combine the squares. So I have a number of options. So I can say, so let's say case one. Let's take the smallest square. The smallest square is going to be, let's, let's actually write it here. So we can say x squared times x cubed minus 3 will be equal to, I can write this as 2 squared times 2 times 3 cubed. Or I can say it is equal to 3 squared times 3 times 2 cubed. Or it can be the combination of these two squares, which is going to be 6 squared, which is going to be... Um, 6 squared times, ha, ah, come on, times 6. Okay, so that's the, so these are the possible options. It's either I use this combination or this combination or this combination. Okay, so let's start with the first option. Case 1, we have x squared times x cubed minus 3 equals, this is going to be 4 times 27 times 2 is 54. 4 times 54. 4 times 54. Now, what does this mean? It means that 
my x, x squared is 4, so x equals 2, right? So this means that, which means x equals 2. If x equals 2, what would this be? This is going to be 2 cubed minus 3. That's 8 minus 3, which is 5. Oh, 4 times 5, it will not satisfy this. x equals 2 will not satisfy this equation if you go back here. Because this is 32 minus... No, no, no. This, it's not valid. Um, not valid. Because if you go plug in x equals 2 here, this equation will not give you 0. It's a negative number you're going to get. Okay, so let's go back to case 2. For case 2, we're going to be using this expression here. So this is the square. We're saying times 3 times 8, 24. 9 times 24. Okay, this means that x squared is equal to 9. That means x equals 3. Okay, if x equals 3, can we plug in 3 here? Well, 3 to the 5th is going to be... <sighs> 243. Okay, that's 81 times 3. 243. 243 minus 27. 43 minus 27 is 16. That's it. So it means x equals 3 is a solution. This guy works. Let's go. Let's go. So we go to the third option, case 3. And case 3 is such that we have x equals, so we have x squared times x cubed minus 3 equals 6 squared times 6. So that tells us that x squared equals 6 squared, which implies x equals 6. Well, if x equals 6, can we um, have this? Well, this is going to be 36. 6 squared is 216 minus 3. By the time you multiply this, this number is going to be too big. So not valid. So, because we're only looking for integer solutions, this is the only integer solution to this system, not to this equation, rather. So, um, x equals 3 is the only positive integer solution. Boxing. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.